Love it. 72 or 99? You guys pick. 99. All right, let's see 99. This will be the last one. Wow. Okay, 99. Oh, okay, here we go. So, guys, I want you to know what I'm thinking when I look at this. First, I look at the key signature. So, for me, uh, trumpet, it is the key of B flat. I'm in 2 4. I've got mezzo forte. There's some staccatos. There's slurs in it. It doesn't look like there's any kind of repeats or anything. So, I'm kind of going through the stars once again, guys. Uh, accidentals. I see a couple accidentals in the key signature. So, I, I, need, to, I need to make sure I get those. And here we go. Allegretto, too. So, it's a little bit fast. I'm actually playing for the musical, and I was mostly sight reading the stuff that's there. That's what I thought. Um, which, see, that's where it's, it's good because then you can be like, someone can be like, hey, I need someone to play for this gig. And you're like, mm, I got it. I haven't seen the music, but I can play it. And there you go. So, sight reading is really a good thing, good thing to work on. So, first of all, though, but if we're going to be able to sight read, we got to be able to do a little bit better on our little stars pre-test, okay? So I, I looked at them, I didn't grade them, I didn't make any marks in yours, but today we're gonna go over them and uh, fix some of the answers in that. So uh, don't be discouraged, don't be discouraged. That was just so I know what you guys know and what you don't know. And um, so we need to work on a couple things. Okay, so beginning with S, we're gonna begin with S. Okay, so sharps or flats in the key signature. Um, I'm not gonna touch on this a whole lot on how to identify key signatures because the main thing we need to know is which notes are sharp and which notes are flat when we're playing. But just a quick run through of how you can tell what key something is in. There's two really easy tricks. One is if it's a sharp key, you take the very last sharp and you go up a half step. So right, this is what, what sharp is this, guys? No clue. F sharp, okay. So what key am I in if I if I just go up a half step to find the key? G. G. The key of G, exactly. So this works for any of them. If I kept going like to a key that's like this, that's G sharp, so what key am I in? The last sharp. Sure. If the last sharp is G sharp, what key am I in? Yep, that's the key of A. Key of A. Very good. So if we reverse this, ah, uh, thank you, Andy. And <laughs> Um, if we change this and we do flats instead, you go by the second to last flat. So let's say, oh, bless you. Okay, so let's say, um, ignore the sharps, okay? Um, let's say we've got B flat and E flat, okay? The second to last flat is the name of the key. So what key am I in? Thank you. B flat, yes, it's the second to last flat. So let's do one more. If I add this right here, the second to last flat is E flat. So what key am I in? E flat. Yep, it's as simple as that. The one that you have to memorize is if there's just one flat, you're in the key of F. You just have to know that one. No sharps or flats. What key is that? Something. Oh, come on, guys. You guys, you guys got to know this. What key is it if there are no sharps or flats? F. I heard you say it. C. Key of C. Yep, that's the key of C. Okay. So the answers from right to left, starting at the top, is the key of G, B flat, A. D, F, this is the bottom row now, so F, and then E flat, and C. Those are the answers for those key signatures. So you know, I will probably do a post test, and I'm going to change that one a little bit, just so that you guys name which notes are sharp. Does that sound a little bit easier that you guys can handle that? So, for example, the first one you would just list F sharp. That would be the note that would be sharp in that key. Does that make sense? That's how I'm going to change that one for you guys, okay? So, get your instruments ready. Uh, we're going to do a couple things with key signatures now in your little binder. So, uh, uh, I love the enthusiasm, Mark. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Roger Winslow. This is to Winslow. Yeah. Yeah. Drum six. Um, Mr. Jones, can you help me go? What's that, Miguel? Is there only one sack? <coughs> yes. <laughs> I couldn't find one. Can you, can, you, can you just put it in the middle and share it off? That just killed this man. 
I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, I looked for it, so I want you to know I didn't forget about you guys, but I, I just could not find it. So I'm sorry. Okay, the first one we're going to go to, guys, is going to be number three. Number three, okay? <laughs> Okay, number three, look at your key signature. So right now we're focusing on key signature, and notice that the notes in the key signature will always be so two flats. They will be flat for the entire number, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so number three, and here we go. Take a look at it for a moment. Make sure you look at all the, all the flats. So flutes, you've got three flats, clarinets. you got one, and then we've got saxophones. You got it easy, you got nothing. So, all right, here we go. A one, two, uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> to number 12 now, so move quickly with me, guys. Number 12. That's right, you guys are on the turn page, do you? Okay. Number 12, okay? So we got a new key for you. Take a look at it, see which number it applies to. And make a mental note of where those are. Here we go. And one, two, one, two, and play. <laughs> Want to take out those worksheets again, okay? So on to T. Okay, I need volunteer. Tell me what the top number of a time signature is. Devin. Um, the top number is the number of beats in the measure. Okay, good. I'm going to modify that a tiny bit. I want you guys to think of it as the number of counts in a measure. That's that's a good answer. Most people are told beats, and that that is correct. But I want to change. It. I want to think counts. Because, for example, if we were in the key, uh, sorry, the time signature of 6 8, how many beats are there usually? No? 6 8 usually has two beats. Just think about it. If you're going to watch that, but it has six counts. So that's the way I like to think of it. Does that make sense to you guys? So what I'd like you to put, top, num top number is the number of counts per measure. Okay? So write that in with your pencils. Number of counts per measure. You guys got that in your time sheet yet? Okay, good. The bottom number, Mr. Deutsch was the only one to get this right, so I want you to share what the bottom number is. Yes, it's the note that gets the beat. Um, as uh, Mr. Johnson talks about sometimes, is that he wishes that the system would actually be something more like this. So like if we were in 4-4, four, four, it would make sense for something like that. Four over quarter notes. Mm -hmm. The bottom number refers to which note gets the count. And I'm going to yeah, say count. Yeah, I just wrote my head. That's what I was thinking. I put beat that gets...